Okay, welcome everyone to LinkedIn Tips and Tricks. I'm here as a guest of the Swinburne Student Union and Emma's on standby if we need to ask any questions. And uh, you're welcome to put questions in the chat throughout the presentation. Whilst this session is being recorded, your details will not appear on the recording whilst I'm sharing the screen. So once the formal presentation has finished, I will also stop uh, sharing the screen, turn off the recording, and then we'll actually let you ask whatever questions you like without anybody else listening. So well done for those of you who've turned up live because you get to ask and get your questions answered. So tonight is LinkedIn Tips and Tricks and you will be receiving a Word document with all this information. So if you're watching the recording, uh, please contact me directly or Swinburne Student Union and we'll definitely make sure that you get a copy. And there's also a link here to the previous session that we hosted back in 2020. And tonight we're gonna to be covering, learn the basics around your LinkedIn profile, discover how to attract the right career and use the right language to do that and understand how you're currently branding yourself and what you might need to change, update, modify, whatever, and learn how to describe the skills for the job you want. Now, I'm assuming that some of you are still studying or about to start your course and I trust that everything will be fairly straightforward. A lot of people have found that LinkedIn is a social media app that they're not as familiar with as they are with other social media apps, but I'm here to demystify the whole thing. If you would like a copy of one of my books, well, my first four books are all available online free of charge at ResearchGate. And the first book is 120 Ways to Achieve Your Purpose with LinkedIn. So you're welcome to visit that link and download any one of my first four books. Now, I'd also, whilst you're listening to me, invite you to download the LinkedIn app for your phone because I'm going to show you a little bit later how you can click in the search box and use a scan code feature to connect with people you meet in real life. And you can use this at any time. It looks much better than a business card and uh, definitely encourage you uh, to use that. But I'll, I'll show you that uh, at near the end of the presentation. Okay, so LinkedIn appears to work best in the Google Chrome browser. So I am using LinkedIn on a Mac laptop for this session and I recommend that you use Google Chrome as well. It seems to work. Uh, it does work in other browsers, but sometimes things go a bit strange. So uh, just be aware of that. And there's lots to cover tonight. I'm not going to mention every word in detail. This document is designed for you to use on your own for your purpose at the end of the presentation. Just to give you a tiny little background on me, I started my working career six days after my last year 12 exam when I worked at Westpac, uh, one of the first banks in Australia in 1982, a very long time ago. And I worked there for 11 years before I moved from Adelaide to Melbourne. And I found the process of moving difficult. So I'm, I fully understand how challenging it can be if you're an international student. And as a consequence, I did the last subject of my degree was a research project. And I surveyed 96 people who'd moved to Melbourne in the last five years and set up newcomersnetwork.com in 2001. So I've been in the online world for a very, very long time. Um, after I got a job in Melbourne, I got sacked when I was pregnant. And so basically I haven't had a real job since 1994. And I do a whole bunch of different things. And I suspect that in the future, many of us will be working rather than having jobs. And I'm definitely an advocate if you're game to be a gigster, and that's my fourth book, which you're again welcome to download. Another really important component of my career has been the amazing variety of voluntary work that I've done. And I don't believe you should work for free, but I do believe that volunteering in your areas of interest are a great way to acquire new skills, make new friends, and also network and get referrals. There's a pictures of my five books. So for those of you who don't know, LinkedIn started out in uh, or launched on the 5th of May, 2003. And it's uh, well, it's actually over 810 million members now, I forgot to update that little bit. And there's over 12 million users here in Australia. Uh, there's over six and a half million active monthly users on LinkedIn. Now, I realize it's not gonna be as popular as Instagram or Facebook, 
but it is highly optimized for your name. So if people are searching for you, your LinkedIn profile can appear in search results. It's a fantastic platform for publishing content. And it's also a terrific way to build your network because a network is what will keep you going in life, not just a full-time job in a secure organization. And there's no such thing as a secure job in the world. And obviously I was retrained from Westpac when I moved from Adelaide to Melbourne because they didn't have any jobs in Melbourne. So even working for one of the big four banks didn't protect me way back then and it still wouldn't protect me now. So definitely encourage you to source multiple revenue streams as you go through life and uh, build your wealth, build, buy assets, don't, you know, create expenses. If any of those of you studying accounting subjects, you'll understand exactly what I mean. There's lots more information about LinkedIn on those links. Now, one of the main principles of LinkedIn is this idea of having keywords. So if you were an aspiring accountant, you could appear in search results for accountant because the algorithm doesn't match the word aspiring or future or, uh, you, know, um, you know, achieving accountant. It doesn't match the meaning of the word before it. It just looks for the keywords. And the number one spot to put your keywords is in your headline, which is directly underneath your name. We'll go into a bit more detail about that later. There's lots of benefits to LinkedIn. You can check those out there. And if you want to convince somebody else of the values of LinkedIn, you can follow that link. And here's some reasons why you should create a good LinkedIn profile. So I'm going to give you the big broad brush overview in the next hour. But if you want to go and drill down a little bit more, you can definitely follow these links and learn more. If someone Googles your name, it's likely to come up in Google search results. So I have my own website, sueelson.com, which I started in 2012. And it took me six months to get that website above LinkedIn in Google search results. So very highly optimized for your name. It's still free. And up until September 2020, I had the free account. And I definitely, everything I'm showing you tonight is on the free account. You do not need to have a paid account and you can use it as your personal database, build and maintain that network. You can use it as a research tool to find individuals, organizations, jobs. You can build your network internationally. So reconnect with any of your friends, family, colleagues from overseas. And also you can optimize keywords. So if you Google LinkedIn specialist, you will actually find that my LinkedIn profile comes up on the first page of Google search results. And that's because I've worked out a way to optimize my LinkedIn profile by continually producing content, using the keywords in those target locations. So if anybody was just looking for a LinkedIn specialist, they could find me on Google. And I've actually got a number of jobs that way, or a lot, a number, a lot of work, I should say, not jobs. And if you've got any clues as to how LinkedIn has benefited you before today. If you'd like to pop those in the chat, I would love to see, you know, how it's helped you up until now. Has it helped you get a job? Have you been able to get a recommendation so that you've got a 24-hour reference on your LinkedIn profile? Is there anything that LinkedIn has done for you up until now? Would love to see it in the chat. Okay, so hangups about LinkedIn. Well, some people think there's no privacy and they're very reluctant to share their information online. And I say, well, you've kind of got to have a digital footprint nowadays, but that doesn't mean you need to, um, you know, tell people what you had for breakfast. It's really just about talking about your career things. Um, if you don't have a question to ask, I'll ask you to stay on mute. Uh, you're welcome to put any questions in the chat. If you don't know who to connect to, that really depends on your purpose. And if you think it's going to take too much time, you need to decide whether or not uh, that is worthwhile, uh, what you're doing, and if it's leading to opportunities, still use the free account. If you're worried about your English, I would suggest that you use dot points and little statements rather than long sentences. So definitely consider that um, as an option as well. In there. Just a minute, I'll just make some uh, adjustments there. Okay, and if you're scared of computers, you do need to show your level of digital competency, not just your literacy. So literacy means you have a LinkedIn profile, but competency means you've used the features well. You may need to follow some social media guidelines if you're working for an employer and if you need help. 
I suggest you ask a friend or an expert to help you out. Now, because this presentation is for Swinburne University of Technology students and more specifically people who are members of the student union, I would like to encourage you to do some very specific things related to Swinburne on your LinkedIn profile. So first of all, in the education section, whilst you're studying your course, you can mention that you're studying and you can describe the university. You can mention subjects you're studying or subjects you've already completed and list the name of those subjects. And if there's something in your future that you would like to be known for, you can also mention topics. Now, I do not recommend that you lie under any circumstances, but you can massage the truth. So let's say you were doing accounting and the topics included how to use Xero. And Xero is a well-known uh, accounting platform used by many businesses. So you could say topics included zero, and then you would appear in search results for zero. You can also mention in that section the link. So you can just copy paste that in. You can even add a video as an extra media file. So you can pick any video you like from the Swinburne University YouTube channel. And you also need to add your Swinburne email address to your account. Now, I realise when you stop studying, that email address will no longer work. But by adding it to your account, your LinkedIn account, you stop yourself from accidentally creating a new LinkedIn account. And if someone is trying to find you via that email address, it will automatically come to your one and only LinkedIn profile. You do not need multiple LinkedIn profiles if you're looking for different types of work. I also encourage you to follow the school. So just visit that link and choose follow and also follow the company of the Swinburne Student Union so that you can receive updates from there as well. So they're all tips related to Swinburne. You can also join the alumni group. So once you've finished your studies, you become an alumni, but why not join now so that you can get some tips from the other people who've already completed their studies. I definitely recommend that you follow this and other Swinburne company profile so you can do a search and there's other groups as well. You can see if any of those are relevant for you and definitely invite your fellow students to connect with you, your tutors, your lecturers, whoever has you know, been helpful to you throughout your study time before you leave university. Don't wait till afterwards because you might forget their name. So definitely do that before you leave. You can also endorse other people for their skills. So say you've got a part-time job, you connect with your employer and your employer is really good at managing and leading. You could endorse them for that skill and you could also write them a recommendation. And finally, I recommend that you follow Swinburne Student Union on Facebook and there's the link. There are some other tips on LinkedIn for students and future graduates and also what to do for your career whilst you're at home. Now, I wrote that piece, obviously, during when COVID first hit, but a lot of people don't want to go out and work when the pandemic's still on. So there's some other tips in there that you could also follow. And as I said, don't forget to pop your questions in the chat. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do statistics and backup. And ideally, if you can follow along and do these things on your LinkedIn profile at the same time, that would be fantastic. And the idea is, if you've printed this booklet out, you actually write these numbers down as at today. And then if you do the edits I suggest and you check your statistics again in three months time, you should notice a significant change in your statistics. Now, if you can't remember how I did all this, you can just click the links in the network in the um, document here. And you can also see what I recommend is your minimum and your goal, 500 or more connections in time, but start off with at least 60 people as connections. So I'm going to show you all of these on LinkedIn. So first of all, your number of connections. So if you click on the My Network button, you will see at the top of your screen, I have 21,404 connections. The maximum you can have is 30,000. The next one is how many followers do you have? And if you want to be known as a thought leader or influencer at some point, you will want more followers than people in your network. And I have that. I've got 23,093 followers. 
Now, the next statistic is available on your actual profile. So if you click the blue LinkedIn icon and then your face, what you will see here as we scroll down is a little section called your activity, oh, sorry, analytics. And you can see here, I've had 1,601 people look at my profile in the last 90 days. And the minimum number you should aim for there is 100. And over here is the number of times I've appeared in search results in the last seven days. And the minimum number that should be is 50. Now, obviously my numbers are a lot higher because I'm on LinkedIn a lot more often and I use it for a lot of my work, um, but they're the numbers you want to aim for. As you scroll down through the LinkedIn profile, you will see that I have skills. So for my top three skills that I've chosen, you want to have at least 20 votes for each of those. And here in recommendations, there's recommendations received. You can see I've got 82. And in recommendations given, I've got 63. So ideally, I should give, you know, another 20 reviews to other people so that those numbers are almost identical. And also, you know, how often are you posting? So if we go back up to um, your recent, oh, there's featured items there, activity. So if we look in activity here, whoops, sorry, not that one. If we look at the posts from this one, we should see where, how many articles we've written as well as how many posts. So here's my post. So this is the one I put out today and this is the one I put out this morning. And then there's articles. Now posts go in the news feed. So they appear today and unless lots and lots of people like it, they, they sort of disappear. But articles stay there forever. So don't think you've got nothing to say, particularly if you are just starting out. You can write content. You do not have to have it referenced. It can be an opinion piece. If you've got ideas you'd like to share, I definitely encourage you to write articles. Now, you won't get as many views, but they can appear in Google search results. And I'll, I'll show you that a little bit later. So there are your statistics. Oh, number of following, that's also on that feed followers link. If you've got an all-star profile, this simply means that you have completed enough sections on your LinkedIn profile. So it will tell you that in that main box, usually, or it used to. Oh, it looks like it's disappeared and I keep changing things. Uh, but there used to be a little thing called all-star profile uh, just in here. And all that means is that uh, you have yeah, been active and you've, you've filled in enough details on your LinkedIn profile. Okay, and I recommend at least one a week in posts, but if you're reluctant to share things, you can do one a month if you like engaging with other people's stuff. And if you're going to write articles, I recommend you do about three a year. So when I'm working with a client who would like to use their LinkedIn profile to achieve their goals, the first thing I do is save it to PDF. So what I do in the browser is I make sure that the browser setting, so in Google Chrome, you click, click the three dots on the top right of your screen and you choose settings and you choose advanced settings and you choose downloads. And you make sure that this button here is ticked to yes. Ask where to save each file before downloading. So now when I visit my LinkedIn profile, what I will be able to do from the more button is I will be able to save my P profile to PDF. So click more, save to PDF. And the way I recommend that you save it to your computer, you choose which folder you wanna put it in, but you rename it and you type in today's date, which is a nice fun one to do. And you put in your name with dashes in between the words. Because I do a lot of website development work, you always use dashes, not underscores or spaces because that way the search engines can see all the words in your files um, and you save it. So that way, when you look at this file name, 
you'll know that this is the LinkedIn profile of your name saved on that date. Now, you can visit anyone on LinkedIn and click that more button and save it to PDF. So let's say you've got a colleague or a mentor or somebody whose LinkedIn profile you love the look of, you can save it to PDF and go through it and, you know, try and use some of the same things that they're using. Again, you must tell the truth, uh, but use nothing wrong with reusing some of the information if it's relevant to you. Now, the other thing you can do is you can get a full copy of your data. Now, this is available from the settings. And when you do this, you will be sent a link by LinkedIn. So you choose this download the larger data archive and you choose request it, pop your password in and choose done. But what will happen is LinkedIn will prepare that those files for you. And then a little while later, they'll send you a link. Now you need to click on that link immediately and download those files. And there's a really interesting file in there. It's actually called inferences. And this file will actually tell you what LinkedIn thinks about you. And I was super excited when I looked at mine because they believe I was born 10 years before I really was. So I think that's kind of cool that they think I'm younger than my real age. Uh, but they also know that I'm in my own business and that I'm not looking for work. You know, there's quite a few interesting little um, results on that inferences page. Now, there's some important settings and I'm only going to focus on the most important ones. Now, this next tip that I'm about to give you is the most important tip I can give you for the whole workshop. There's a little cheat sheet there. But what you need to do is when you create a LinkedIn profile, LinkedIn automatically gives you a link that goes to your profile and it will have linkedin.com slash in slash first name dash last name dash numbers and letters. But that does not optimize you in Google search results. So what you need to do is you need to visit your LinkedIn profile and on the top right hand side, you will see a link to edit your public profile and URL. So you make sure that your face appears large on the left hand side of the screen. And over here on the right, it says edit public profile and URL. Now I've already done this. So obviously I don't need to change it, but if I wanted to change it, I would click the pen there. And if Sue Elson, all one word was not available, I'd put a dash in. If that wasn't available, I might put a number at the end. If that wasn't available, I might put my qualification on the end, or I could put uh, Ms at the beginning if I wanted to put that, or doctor if I had a PhD. There's all sorts of variations. But the main thing you want to have in here is your name. So that regardless of what you put there, it will optimize your name. But obviously, if you're having that link on your email signature or on a printed business card or on your resume or CV, then it looks better if it's just, you know, all your name just like that. Whilst you're on this screen, um, if you ever get anxious for any reason, you do not need to delete your LinkedIn account. You can just turn off the visibility and you also need to make sure that everything here is turned on. Sometimes LinkedIn mysteriously turns these things off. Um, so you might want to just check that they're all still turned on. Now, the next thing that's most important is your photograph. Now, your photo is what people are going to look at. And believe it or not, up to 65% of the time spent looking at your LinkedIn profile will be spent looking at your photo. There are some tips here, and I recommend that you visit Chris Sprott if you want your own photo or you can get one through a photographer friend but probably not a shot from your mobile phone and if you want to you know if you've got really thick skin and you're ready to face some criticism you can upload your photo at photofeeler.com and people will assess your photo for your competency influence and likability but I guess the main thing to remember is it needs to be a photo that you're happy with now, ideally, it will also look like you would look at work, not as a student. And also, you would make sure, if I choose edit here, 
that your eyes are on that one third line there. Your hair is at the top of the circle. And ideally your, you know, bit of shoulder is in there with some of your clothing in the bottom of the photo. So ideally this top would have looked better if it was a little bit higher up because there's a lot of neck showing here. So it's not that I'm, you know, being uh, disrespectful in any way to my physical body, but I want people to focus on my eyes. So if I was wearing a higher neck garment there, that would make people focus on my eyes and not my neck. So that would be an improvement if I had a, a different photo on there. But, you know, keep it in mind, looking at the camera, smiling. Some people choose to use their passport photo, which is very serious. And obviously I do not recommend that, particularly for the Australian market. And I say that a smile is the universal language because everybody in the world understands a smile. Now, the next most important thing is your headline. So as I said before, if you don't mention the word accountant, you're not going to appear in accountant search results. And I have a little formula. It's called the LinkedIn headline formula. And I do many, many different things, but my main reason for being on LinkedIn is to attract LinkedIn work. So I've given myself a label of independent LinkedIn specialist. So every time I appear in the news feed, that's what people see and they remember about me. So they're constantly reminded that's what I do. Now, what I also do is list a bunch of keywords of the types of work that I do so that I could be found for any of these other words. So you can see here, you've got three lines that you can put in words. So put in as many words as you can. Do not use a slash between words because that joins words together. You need to have an actual space between each word. And the last thing I've popped in is that I like dancing and a little emoji. And that's so people know that I am active, I get out and about, and I have interests other than spending all my life in front of a computer. So it's really good to sort of add a little bit of colour and flavour. One person, a client of mine, she loved to cook, so she put a slice of pizza in as her emoji and she loved eating pizza. So it can be as lighthearted as you wish, but that headline is really, really important. And don't forget, if you're not an accountant or you're not a scientist or you're not something yet, you can always say aspiring or future uh, at the beginning of that word. The background picture. Now, ideally, you would have something that when your face slides to the middle, it still looks okay. And you can see I'm going to cut off my books when my face moves to the middle because when people see me on a mobile phone, they will, my face will be there. But I'd like to show you another profile. And this is a profile that has the colour in the background. So the colour is the same as the clothing. And you can see here how that focuses the eye on looking on the face and looks much more professional than the greeny, yucky one that LinkedIn provides. So you can just add in an image there. It can be a solid colour. It could be all white if you want to. Um, but yeah, it definitely looks better than leaving it blank. So I encourage you to consider that option as well. Now the summary, this is a section that a lot of people, particularly when they're young, find it hard to write because they don't like talking about themselves. So you can use it as an opportunity to say the types of roles that you're interested in. You can list any professional skills you already have. So even if you were just stacking shelves at a supermarket, you can, and you know, working on the cash registers, you could say you had customer service skills, stock management skills, um, all of those sorts of things you can add in. You, any technical skills. Now this includes any computer technology that you use, apps, programs, software as a service functions, you know, anything like that. Personal skills, which are things like how good are you at managing your time? Are you results orientated? Are you ethical? Like what sorts of things are about you as an individual? Also, if you've got some experience, you might like to mention the industries you've worked in as well as the locations that you've worked in. Now, the locations could also include if the organisation you were working for had 
business dealings with New Zealand, for instance. You could you know, say that New Zealand, you do a lot of work with that. So that could be a location. And then interests again. So whilst I also, I like dancing, I also like walking, being in fresh air, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So you can put those things as well. And I haven't seen any questions yet. So I want to encourage you to pop them in the chat and I'll answer them on the way through, or you can wait till the end and we'll do it face to face. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is settings. Now, as I've already mentioned to you, I do recommend that you add all of your email addresses to your LinkedIn account. So it's very easy to do. You just choose email addresses here and change. You can see I've got 20 email addresses in there. So there's lots of them, but the one at the top is your primary and that's where all your correspondence comes. So that's the main one, obviously there. And the other things that you can do whilst you're here is you can turn off auto play videos because you don't want videos to start playing when you're out and about on your mobile device. And you must turn this one off, people also viewed. Now, what this means is if someone looks at your LinkedIn profile, you don't want them to see who else has looked at someone similar to you. So you turn this off. The only time you would turn this on is late at night when you want to see who your competitors are. In terms of visibility, if you've got a job interview and you want to check out the person who's interviewing you, what you can do is turn yourself to anonymous. You can go and visit their LinkedIn profile and read all about them and then come back here and turn yourself back on. Now you need to leave yourself turned on so you can see the last five people who looked at you online. Um, you can also decide who can see your email address. And if you're looking for work, I'd suggest anyone on LinkedIn. And there's lots of other settings. You can go through all of these. If you're getting too many messages or whatever, you can change any of these other settings. But they're the most important ones that I would recommend that you change. So now we're going to look at some specific areas on your LinkedIn profile and you are all welcome to check out my LinkedIn profile as often as you like after this event. And in the websites section, you can add your three websites and I would recommend the first one be your own website. You can get a free Google website. I'll give you the link to that a little bit later. You can also link to a professional association membership website. So uh, I knew a student who was studying veterinary science and the Australian Veterinary Veterinarians Association, uh, they allow you to join for free as a student member. And it's much better to join as a student when the membership rates are low because professional membership usually starts about $300 per year. So definitely recommend you do these sorts of things and get the full 12 months value out of it. Uh, before you finish your studies. And also maybe a social media profile related to your area of expertise or interest. So maybe you've got an Instagram account where you share lots of cool stuff, um, you could link to that. So that information is back on your profile and there's blue writing which says contact info. And when you click on that, it will enable you to add the three websites. Now, when you do add a website, you need to choose the other options. So here's contact info. Because when you choose other, you can then provide a description. Okay, so if I chose personal, it would remove that description box there. But if I choose other, um, then I can type in Sue Elson website. And then there's my link because I'm a member of the Career Development Association Australia. I pop that in there. And then I've also linked to where I've got my books published. So um, I've chosen to put my phone number in there. I understand not everybody wants to do that. I have not put my home address in here, but I have mentioned the suburb so that people can click on the map to find me, but also so that I appear in Canterbury search results as well. So that's the contact info section. Now, the experience, and you might say, I've got a job in a pizza shop and that's not related to where I want to work in my career. However, it does show that you're able to combine work and study. Now, I used to do the graduate recruitment for Westpac, the bank, 
And when we reviewed an applicant for the graduate program, we looked at all the things they were doing in their personal and professional life. So if they got straight A's at university and were not involved in any sports, any community organisations, and they didn't have a job, they actually would not get through the first round. We looked for people that had a diverse range of experience. So if you've got voluntary work, you can list that. If you've got casual work, you can list that. Uh, please talk about those jobs you've had and describe your achievements. So when you first joined, maybe you were just taught everything on the job, but maybe after six months, they asked you to teach new employees how to do that. So that was, you can describe that as an achievement, invited to help train new employees. That is an achievement because it's over and above what you were originally hired to do. You can list all your tasks and you can describe the enterprise so that people understand what that organisation does, particularly if it's not something that everybody knows about. And even if you are not working, if you are looking for work, the algorithm, which is the equation that determines who appears in search results, it will look for people who are currently working. And you might say, but I don't have a job, I'm studying. So what you can do is you can create a job and it's called career research. And so it starts from whenever your last job finished until now. And you can say here, as I've given an example, chemical engineer internship or graduate position. And that's what you're looking for. So it's career research and that is your job for want of a better word. And so then the algorithm's happy and believes you're currently working and you're much more likely to appear in search results. And again, you can describe what you're doing as part of that to, to look for work. As I said before, you can mention your education, your voluntary experience. You can get your friends who you're connected to to endorse you and also get some recommendations from your current or past employers or people you've had dealings with. There are lots of extra sections which we're not going through today, but you can add in all your professional memberships and licenses and certifications. So if you get that student membership, you can add that in to the licenses and certifications and in the organizations section, two sections. And also if you add content, I recommend that you keep a copy of it as well. So uh, you can also mention any languages other than English that you can speak and you can definitely check out my LinkedIn profile if you want to see how I've done any of those. And that's how to showcase your professional membership if you take it on. You can also set hashtags for topics that you're interested in so that hopefully those things will appear in your newsfeed. And the goal with completing all this information is to let the robots do all the work rather than you have to go knocking on doors, chasing down work. Now, one student I worked with, uh, he updated his LinkedIn profile after a one hour training session. And the following day, he started getting a minimum of six inquiries per day looking for him to come and work for that organisation. Now, that's too many. You don't want six offers a day, particularly if you've already got some work. Uh, but the point I'm making is you can optimise your LinkedIn profile and your activity and then get those opportunities come to you. Now, some of you may be budding entrepreneurs, and if that's the case, woohoo, I'm very excited for you. You might have a little side hustle going on. And what you can do is you can set up a company profile. Now, you don't need to be a registered company with a proprietary limited after your name. I've actually got a company profile called Sue Elson so that all of my content can be amalgamated under my company profile. But if you want to set that up, you can just follow that link. And there's some tips on how to maximise it, some best practice and some strategies for you to use. But also, if you work for an organisation, I definitely re recommend that you support that organisation online and you see what they're publishing and you like, comment, share, you get involved, you connect with other employees that work there. You know, there's lots of different things that you can do to support your employer. And I love supporting the people I work for. I often write them reviews. I, you know, like their posts on social. 
because after all, they paid me. So why wouldn't I want to get involved and support them as well? And if there is a policy you need to abide by, make sure you understand that. Now, Facebook has groups. LinkedIn has groups. I'm here to tell you the Facebook groups are way better than the LinkedIn groups. But there are groups there. And as I said earlier, you can join the alumni group, which is one I definitely recommend. They are not as active as the news feed is, uh, but they're still worth joining. So check out uh, groups that might be of interest and you can definitely consider joining those. Now, as some of you may be looking for work, I'm going to suggest that you turn on career interests. So you can just follow that link. You can list five different job titles of work you'd like to be considered for. And you can also mention five job locations. So you could say Melbourne, Greater Melbourne, Victoria, Sydney, I don't know, maybe you want to move somewhere else. Uh, you can mention those. You can also mention that you're willing to work remotely. You can also turn on job alerts. So that way you can be the first to know when a new job appears. And so I definitely recommend that if you're serious about getting work, you turn them on. And also, if you do apply online through LinkedIn, don't just say apply with my LinkedIn profile. You actually want to add in a document which is tailored for the job. And I call that document an application. And it would be a cover letter plus your resume all in one document, which is all tailored specifically for that job. And I have found that everybody who includes that tailored document will get a job interview. That's how much the employers appreciate you matching your application to what they're looking for. So I know it takes longer, but it definitely has a much higher success rate. If there are companies that you would like to be employed by in the future or would like to get an internship or experience with, I definitely recommend that you follow them. I know for a fact that the National Australia Bank looks at people who are following the organisation as their first round of candidates, uh, because if somebody is following the National Australia Bank, then obviously it says they like the bank and they're more interested in being a part of it. You can also reach out directly to people. LinkedIn is a network and I don't want you to be scared of reaching out to people. Now, if you contacted me and said, Sue, can you give me a job? I'd say, well, that's not the right thing to do. But if you contact me for specific information based on the presentation today, I'm going to help you. And there's no doubt about it. But if you want more tailored advice, then I'll obviously charge you for it. But if you think about reaching out to people, most people are happy if they feel it's a personal approach and you are genuinely interested, you've already read all their content, you understand what they're about and you don't ask for too much. In fact, the most that most people were happy to provide you with is information. But if that goes well, then you could perhaps ask them another question and you can say, is there anyone else I should talk to? And then you can get a referral. So let's say they say uh, their name is Ian and they say you should speak to Roger. Well, when you contact Roger, you can say Ian sent you. And that is much better. So Roger you know, is just as friendly to you as he would be to Ian, who he already knows. So just think about these ideas as well. You can reach out to people in your home country well before you return if you are planning to do that and build those networks. So don't wait until you've finished your studies to build your network. Build your network during your studies so people get to know you well before you need to contact them. If you're not working at the moment, um, again, remember that you can say you're doing career research. And I also do not recommend that you, you mention your years of experience. You could say three years of experience uh, working in hospitality. Well, um, if you said to me, ex ex extensive experience in hospitality, including customer service, waitressing, um, uh, stock control, um, uh, chefing, you know, all those things, then I say, wow, that's, you know, a lot of different skills in there. So that's much better for you. And also talk about your achievements in a language that is appropriate. So here in Australia, if you talk about what you've done and what you've achieved, 
fantastic. Woohoo. If you turned around and said, I was the best employee that they've ever seen, that's probably not entirely accurate, even if they said that, but it comes across all wrong. So um, just focus on the actual things that you've done and state them clearly and you will not be boasting, you will not appear over the top um, and also write it down when you're doing it because in a year's time or three years' time, you might forget about all the things you were doing in 2022. And there's more tips on how to find a job or work in that particular article there. Now, once you've finished off your LinkedIn profile, you've got all your settings organised, you've decided to turn on jobs, you've maybe applied for some, the next thing you can do is start getting involved with the news feed. And all social media is basically a megalomaniac. They want more people logging in more often, spending more time there. So anything that you do that encourages that behaviour, the platform will be happy with. So if you continually engage with other people's content, then they're going to be happy because somebody liked their stuff. And so that's going to help. So the first step is to engage with others. The second step is to curate. So if you're not sure what to write, but you really love the topic, I don't know, of um, uh, virtual reality, okay? So what you could do is you could find all these really great articles on the topic of virtual reality and then share them. And then people will get to know you for all this great stuff that you share on the topic of virtual reality. And that is called curation or curating content because what you're doing is you're searching around for the content and then you say, wow, that's really great. And then you've shared it with somebody else. So that's the second stage, engage, curate. And the third stage is to create your own content. And I realise that might feel scary, uh, but you know, practice makes perfect. And this is the way to create content in the newsfeed that will hopefully make it go viral. And these are links to posts that I've done in the past. And it tells you, you know, how many views, how many reactions and how many comments I got in a certain time frame. So you can have a look at those in your own time and see why they worked. And this one here is a really interesting one. So I'm not sure whether there's any people with a Chinese background in our audience, but I was running a course for website development. And what happened was somebody in the room told me that they were trying to do business with a Chinese company. And this Chinese company said they would not do work with them until they fixed up their website. And so the company said, what's wrong with our website? And the, and the Chinese company said, you have black and white photos of your employees on your website. And they said, well, what's wrong with that? Well, apparently in China, black and white photos are used on gravestones. So I thought this was a really interesting topic. So I created this picture of me in black and white and colour, just put it in one image. And I asked this question, I'm not linking to any other websites. I haven't changed anything. I've mentioned at LinkedIn, so it tells everybody it's about LinkedIn. I put some hashtags in there, which are just topics about this post. And I ended up with 32,000 views. It's not showing the number of views here anymore. But you can see there's 181 um, reactions and 64 comments. And, you know, I've responded to all of those comments as well. So um, the reason this was so popular is when people saw it in their news feed, they're just sort of scrolling away. But then when they see these two faces and they know it's the same but it's different, they stop scrolling to try and work out what's going on. And that's, that is then called a high dwell time. So the longer somebody's looking at your stuff, the more likely it is to go viral. So just keep these principles in mind when you're creating your own content. There's lots more examples there, humorous share, an ironing board in my office, a native video, which means I uploaded the video directly into LinkedIn, an award announcement that I sent out on a Friday night, but because that was Friday morning overseas, it got lots of engagement overseas. You know, there's various articles there that you can uh, post that you can check out. Now, as I said earlier in the presentation, 
you can also write articles. And this is where you put together some content of your own. You can put in headings, you can put pictures, you can put in quotes, you can put in bold, italics, you know, all sorts of things. And here's how to write it optimised. So if we just go to Google and we type in tough love unemployed, um, this article that I wrote on LinkedIn from 2017 is number one page one of Google search results. So if you write good quality content, you too can get amazing Google search results. And it's really interesting because a number of students I've had in my uh, courses that I run for other organisations, they've actually come to my courses because social media wasn't covered on their marketing or public relations course. And, and this is, you know, exactly that. That's a, a Google result uh, from writing an article on LinkedIn. And then there's, I've got another one, LinkedIn for authors. It's the same thing. You can see here, that's my article again from 2017. Um, uh, how to find warm leads on LinkedIn. This is an article I did recently. So these are ads, so I can't beat those, but there's my, oh no, this one, 2nd of February, 2022. It's uh, the second link on page one of Google search results. And I only published that 20 days ago. So yeah, it's really cool to be able to write content that can appear in Google search results. If you are going to use images, remember that you should either use your own images or images that you have permission for. And also once you've had content published, if you copy and paste the link here, it will stay on the internet forever. So today I was featured in Yahoo Finance, um, talking about um, confidence. And yeah, I put that link immediately in there. So there's a record of me doing it. So an engagement ratio, you might say, well, what's that? That is when you engage with the news feed. So ideally, you would engage 12 times, liking, commenting, sharing, you know, getting involved, and you would only post your own content once in comparison. So you don't want to be talking all the time and sharing your stuff. You want to be engaging and getting involved with other people's stuff. And you can also share a link to your content and get other people to be involved with it. Now, LinkedIn is an amazing research tool. And if you, um, you can use it to get leads um, if you're in sales. And if you run out of searches, you can do something called a Google advanced search. So if you want to find somebody on uh, LinkedIn, so let's see what I can find. I want to find um, somebody who is a student and Swinburne. Oops. I put it in quotation marks so that it's that word exactly. And Swinburne. So obviously, if you don't have this information filled in on your LinkedIn profile, you won't appear in search results. And then down here, I write the website linkedin.com and I do an advanced search. And here's May, Byron you know, so on and so forth. So isn't that cool? You can find as many people as you want. Now, if you also said you wanted them to be doing, I'm just trying to think of a subject, virtual reality. Here we are. We've got a VR lab technician. He's a PhD student. You can, you know, and these results are really amazing. You can do as many of these Google advanced searches as you'd like. Now, I did mention that we're going to be using the phone, which I'll be showing you some stuff when I turn off the recording in a moment about how to do the scan code feature. But uh, the video and audio, if you're using the LinkedIn app on your mobile device, which is your phone or your tablet, you can add in a 30 second video or a 10 second audio announcement of your name. So this means that when someone visits your LinkedIn profile on their phone, they can watch that short video or they can listen to how your name is pronounced. So if it's not an Australianized name, then that could be very helpful to the person looking at your LinkedIn profile. I also believe if you're gonna add video on LinkedIn that you add it to YouTube first so that it stays online forever. If you wait a little while, you will then get an automatic transcript, which you can then edit 
so it's all correct. And then you can upload the video and the transcript in a file called an SRT file. So that means that when somebody watches your video on LinkedIn, they can see the captions as it plays. And uh, yeah, keep your videos fairly short. Now, obviously this presentation is provided to you free of charge by Swinburne Student Union. So I encourage you to write them a review to say thank you. Uh, not enough people say thank you anymore and people really appreciate it when you do. So if you'd like to write a Facebook review, you can go there. And if you'd like to write a Google review, you can go there. And likewise, if you write me a review, I'll be very happy too. And I've asked hundreds and hundreds of people to write me reviews and I've got hundred and something reviews, uh, but I always appreciate it. Just let me know what was most helpful to you. Now I said earlier also, that you can get a free Google website. So if you want to check that out, you can follow that link. And if you want to write lots of Google reviews, you can join the Google Local Guide program. And that means that your reviews will appear in the top of search results. And that can be good publicity for you as well. I've got some additional ideas on search engine optimization and a couple of quick reminders before we wrap up. And I go to those live questions. Uh, the LinkedIn user agreement. Basically, you are not allowed to do anything on an automatic basis. So please remember that. And if you are going to post regularly for yourself or for an organisation, I do recommend that you keep a record of what you've shared so you can reuse it in the future or share your links like I have done in those examples above. I'll now demonstrate the scan code with the, the, um, the screen off. But I would love to know in the chat what's been most helpful to you today. So if you'd like to pop that in the chat and also what you're actually going to do within the next three days. Because there's been some research that suggests that if you go along to some presentation and you don't do anything within three days, you might not do anything. And that will be a waste of the last hour for you. So I definitely encourage you to think about what you can do in the next three days, even if it's just change your URL and remember to connect with everybody from now on. That, that will be really great. There's lots more information and, uh, available for you at suelson.com and you can check out my books if you'd like to pay for them at 120ways.com or download them at ResearchGate. Also, if you are going to go down the path of the website and I do recommend that you consider purchasing your own domain name, which is yourname.com and creating a website for yourself because your own website, you can showcase whatever you like. And I believe in the future, all the best employees and CEOs, whatever, are all going to have their own name website. So LinkedIn is step one, your own website is step two. So if you can aim to have your own website by the time you've finished your studies, woohoo! And here's what you should do before you start that project. Think about if you're gonna outsource it, how much you should pay and what should be included. And then if you've already got one, what you would do before you redesign it. Now, if you'd like to meet me in person, I run an event called Camberwell Networkers on the second Wednesday of the month in Camberwell, which is not far from Swinburne at 7.30 in the morning. And I have a great group of people who always welcome newcomers and we will make you feel very comfortable. You need to purchase your own refreshments, but that can be a coffee. It doesn't have to be breakfast. And um, yeah, come and join us. You'd be most welcome. Uh, we meet at a venue called My Other Brother. And there's loads more free information at suewelson.com, newcomersnetwork.com. So particularly if you've moved to Melbourne, there's lots of tips in there. And then Camberwell Network is, as I said, for the networking. So uh, since there's been no questions in the chat, I'll, we'll stop the recording. Oh, yes, there is a, something in the chat. Wouldn't you place a business I work with as a student on LinkedIn? Absolutely. Um, you can put it in your experience section. So that was, as I was talking earlier, if you're working in a pizza shop, um, still add it to your LinkedIn profile. Add every job you've ever done. The only job I have not included on my LinkedIn profile is when I was about 14, I started babysitting children. I haven't mentioned that. Uh, but every you know, major job that I've had since, I definitely include on my LinkedIn profile. Some people say, well, why would you put something on? Look, if you were only there for two weeks, you might want to leave that one out. But if you're there for longer than a month, uh, put it in. If you did work experience somewhere and it's related to the career you would like to have, 
I would definitely recommend that you include that on your LinkedIn profile. Terrific question, um, because so many people ask me boring questions that have already included in the presentation, but that's a terrific question. So thank you for asking that. So um, I'll stop sharing and um, Emma, if you can just turn off the recording for us, please. And then we'll go to the live.